Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you for standing. You may be seated, lest I would have you to stand as long as you might want to stand when we get to the passage of scripture that we're going to delve in today. I want to thank, uh, again, the choirs for singing out of their hearts. I want to thank Reverend Jones for that fervent prayer this morning. And uh, we, one thing he said in his prayer is we thank God that he will meet us at our knees. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We ask for that. Oh, um, if I can indulge you for a minute, the story goes that uh, one day a man visited a doctor, and we all know that we all have to go see Dr. Sawbone every now and then um, because he was in excruciating pain. The doctor asked him, what does it hurt? All over, the man answered. The doctor told the man to touch his shoulder. The man touched his shoulder and cried out in pain. Next, the doctor told the man to touch his forehead. The man touched his forehead and cried out in pain again. The doctor told the man to touch his knee. The man uh, touched his knee and winched in pain. He says, doctor, everywhere I touch, I'm in pain. The doctor thoroughly examined the man and concluded, no wonder you, or you have pain everywhere you touch. You have a dislocated finger. <laughs> we might laugh at this. We might laugh at this, but we do the same thing. We let one little thing stop us from our fellowship with God. One little thing that we have, we let it mess up our day. We say we got up on the wrong side of the bed. One little thing, and it seems like that one little thing causes us to hurt all day long simply because we won't let it go. We're like the man with the dislocated finger everywhere he touches. It wasn't that the shoulder or the knee or the forehead was in pain. It was the one thing that caused him his misery. I'd like to pose a question to you. What is your one thing that keeps you or hinders you from your fellowship with God or having a good day no matter how things might be going? You might think that, uh, you know, say, well, Pastor Lee is kind of crazy. What, what, where is he going with this? The thing is, is that I want you to come and go with me to Matthew, the 19th chapter. And I think we can start probably around verse 16. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, about the 16th verse there. And this, this is according to the King James. Ma Matthew 19, and starting at verse 16. Are you there? Yes. Amen. Yes. All right, all right. And it reads on this wise, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt com com uh, not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thou, that, that thou love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. I'll let you talk to you from that thought, that one thing. 
that one thing. Here it is that this is a rich young ruler. He's Jewish. He's rich. And it also says in the text that he's a ruler. He understands the principles of God. He understands uh, what God is all about. He also understands uh, his son Jesus. He's there in the crowd. He's, uh, he's uh, drawn or magnified uh, uh, through his meeting of Jesus. And when he gets there, uh, he says he's, he's kind of puts himself off as self-righteous. Jesus is telling him what he needs to do. The question is posed, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, he, he poses that question, and then he tells him, these are the things you need to do. And he says, all these things I've done since my youth up. I, I've practiced that. Um, just because you're practicing Christian don't mean you're a full Christian. And here it is, is that he's liking in the sense that material possession is standing between him and Jesus. In this text, the one thing is material wealth, and he does not want to give it up to have a fellowship with Jesus. He does not, he's devoid of understanding that a fellowship with Jesus was more than silver and gold. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he didn't really realize that. He didn't realize the opportunity that he was turning down. But, but, but aren't we like this rich young ruler when it comes to serving God? Uh, we make excuses why we can't serve him, why we can't do it fully, why we can't come to church, why we can't participate in church. And we have to understand that these type issues will separate us from the love of God. The one thing. While I'm talking to you, think about your one thing. Let me see if I can hit your street. The one thing... Um, is, is sometimes living without purpose. Uh, we, we just get up and go through the motion. We have no purpose. We don't ask God to plan our day, and then when God sends us through some stuff, we want to get mad with him. Uh, and I'm going to prove that to you a little bit later, and all you have to do is test the, the, uh, the, the social media. Uh, the thing about it is that uh, we try to go our day without fellowshipping with God. The, the old saints has told us, and it's biblically true, that a just a little talk with Jesus makes everything all right. And a lot of times we want to talk to everybody else, big mama, except Jesus. And then we wonder why we go wrong. The blind cannot lead the blind. There are only, Jesus can handle our situations, and whatever we have, Jesus is bigger than our circumstances and situations. Maybe your one thing is anger. You're just mad about everything. Not happy about anything. Uh, you know, you, you, you're just angry. You, you don't like the way folk drive. You don't, you, you don't like what they drive. You don't like what, just angry. Somebody tell you good morning, you ask what's so good about it. Just, just angry, just, just angry. Somebody tell you, you look good in that dress you're trying to say, and then you might turn around and say, you're trying to be funny? <laughs> you understand, you understand. Th those are the little things that will so easily beset us, that will weigh us down, and, and we have those things. Uh, wh what about family issues? Uh, it's bad enough to have your own issues, but now you got some family issues. They, they bring their issues on you. You, you were doing okay this week, but the one thing that's been messing you up is what they told you. And you might have told them, I don't want to know. Don't tell me what you're going through. But they told you anyway. That one thing can mess you up and stop you or stop your fellowship with God. Just try it. Uh, you're trying to pay your bills. You're trying to do your thing. And here comes somebody else thinking just because you work at BP, or you work at the hospital, you're supposed to be able to handle everybody. Well, let me get off of that. But the thing about it is that there's some things that can stop you or hinder you from serving God. This rich young ruler had a problem with material wealth. He figured that money was better than Jesus. And here it is that a lot of folk, uh, we think that money is better than Jesus. And I'm going to get in trouble right now because we'll spend it at the outlet mall. And we'll spend it on um, Amazon, 
And we'll spend it eating, but we ain't going to spend it in God's house. Hello, somebody. <laughs> One thing that stops us from fully serving God simply because we cherish that one thing. And it says so many times, if you want to know where somebody's love is, check their, their pocketbook, check their checkbook, see where the checks are going. Well, most of them don't, don't use checkbooks now, but, but I'm, I'm mighty afraid that we're letting folk stop us from serving God. Uh, 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 maybe it's a 40 year uh, anger that you had with somebody. She pulled your wig, and you pulled hers. Now, I'm not talking about physically, but you know, you had a, you had a beef. You had an argument. Do you know that some folk walking around right now that has family fights that still haven't forgiven one another? And they still, at a family reunion, Uncle Junior shows up, and Uncle Junior, nobody talks about it, but Uncle Junior, yeah, you're the one that uh, pulled that girl wig off and the mess starts all over again. <laughs> We're talking about some things that will mess up a family reunion. Now, now, some things that will separate us with a fellowship and a reunion with Christ Jesus if we let it. But we have to have control. We have to have control, and control comes through faith and a belief in Jesus Christ that we have to let some things go. Amen. That issue that somebody owe you money for a long time ago, let it go. Amen. It's, been, it's been 20 years, they ain't paid you, they ain't gonna pay you. You might as well let that go. But, but don't let that stop you from serving God. Uh, on our jobs, we let our jobs uh, get in our way because what we experience on jobs. We experience a bad day on the job, walk in the house, and we're having a bad day that evening. Have a bad day all through the night, and wake up in the morning with a bad day. And so we have to understand that we have to leave the job out there. We don't bring it with us. There are some things in life that God allows us to go through that we've got to let go. We can't keep holding on to that one thing that we're so angry about, because when we think about it, guess what? We get angry. You have to forgive. And here it is, is that we don't want anything to stand in our way with the fellowship of Jesus Christ. What about selfishness? If it can't be done my way, I'm going to hit the highway. I'm going to take my ball and go home. We have to understand that in this text, this man was selfish because guess what? Uh, he had money, uh, he was a ruler, but he did not know the importance of walking with Jesus. Meeting Jesus. Some of us meet Jesus, but we don't really serve Jesus. We talk Jesus, but we don't serve Jesus. And the key to it is that if we are walking with him, and emulating him, all of these other things will not worry us so much. Because whatever you lost in life, guess what? God can replace it. And sometimes we worry about different things. We need, we need to make sure that just like the man that went to the doctor, we let one thing cause all of our problems. And sometimes it's even in the church. Amen, lights. I can't work with her because, see, she wanted it done this way, and that's the wrong way. My mama didn't teach me how to do it that way. I'm not being messy. I'm just trying to let you know that there are some things that keep us out of the fellowship with members of the body of Christ as well as uh, Christ himself. Because if we don't have fellowship with Christ, it's hard to have fellowship with our brothers and sisters. And so we need to understand that we need to get rid of those things that easily keep us from fellowship with one another. How do you do that? Glad you asked me. What you do is you forget it. You leave it alone. It's just like a sore. You know, you know how we are when, Brother Terrell, when we have a sore, it just begins to get a scab. And we can't leave it alone. As soon as it starts turning color, we, we scratch at it, 
We started back to bleed, and then we go show everybody, you know this sore that I got, I sure can't get rid of it. <laughs> Leave it alone. Let it heal. And a lot of times we come back, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the one that said that to me. The, the reason, about, uh, the reason uh, about road rage is folk won't let it go. Just, just had one shooting by the rodeo. They waving at each other. I'm pretty sure they wasn't giving a friendly wave. But they ended up shooting one another. And all one of them had to do was let it go. One thing that caused a man's son to get shot in the head, uh, uh, you, something that will mess your life up forever, guess what? Because they wouldn't let it go. Christ gave us an example. On the cross, they got Roman soldiers gambling for his tunic at the foot of the cross. And he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Christ has given us an example of letting things go. And we want to hold on to them forever and ever. I'm not going, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to forgive you, but I ain't going to forget it. <laughs> yeah, you, you know that old thing. You, yeah, you know, you ain't forgiven either. And you sure ain't going to forget it. And so we need to understand that like this rich young ruler, he, he had done some good things. Yeah, he did. He, he had done some good things. He, he took a crack at it. But guess what? He missed the main thing. The one thing that God gave him. And he's talking to Jesus. So Jesus knows his inside and out and knows that the boy ain't ready. And some of us, flash, not ready. We, we just think we are. But there are some things that all of us need to get out of our lives. We need to work on those things and get them out of our lives. And we think we've got it all that, all going on. But guess what? God knows that we are lacking in scenarios. These are the things we need to do. Get rid of those things that so easily beset us. Yes. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, we were watching a documentary on Leandra Johnson, beautiful singer. She won Sunday's Best. She has made... Uh, beautiful strides and music has a people would kill to have a voice like hers and yet the one thing that has turned her upside down in her career is that she lost a brother early she could not let that one thing go and so what happens in order to try to dull the pain she turned to alcohol because of that one thing. It wasn't the alcohol that really caused the problem at first. It was the loss of a brother. See, we need to let somebody go. And the lady told her, the Lord giveth and he taketh away. Why are you worrying about what God has done? We don't need to fuss about what God has allowed. We need to let it go. Yeah, does it hurt? Sure it does. When you lose a loved one or someone is sick. But we need to let it go because God is in control. See, what we do, what we do a lot of time is like Leandra, we try to do it ourselves. We need to let it go and let God handle those things. If we let God handle it, it'll be taken care of. Have you ever thought about different things and it just stayed on your mind? Every time you turned around, it was on your mind. You gotta let it go. Because guess what? Number one, it stalls your progress. We, we have to understand that unless we let it go, we can't move. I was watching one time, uh, th this, this limousine had so many folk in it, and it was trying to get up over a hump. And uh, it, it couldn't get up over the hump because there was too many folk in the car. And, and so the driver says, I gotta, I gotta, I'm going to try it. I tried it at an angle. I can't do it. and say, some of y'all are going to have to get out. So that I can get over the hump, and when I get over the hump, y'all can get back in. Do you know them folks sitting there because nobody wanted to get out? I ain't messing up my red bottom shoes. I'm, I'm too dressed. See, you have to understand. We let certain things get in our way. 
to not fellowship with God. I like Jesus. As I close this message, I like what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. There is some things going on that's him look in the cup. That's It's a bitter cup that I got to drink. God, can it be removed from me? Can I skip this thing? Said, no, 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 you can't skip it. And then later on, the resolve that Jesus says, nevertheless, nevertheless. your will be done. Not mine. Yes, sir. And so what we have to do is that we have to succumb to what Jesus says. Yeah. Us. Acknowledge him first. Yeah. Acknowledge him. Ask what we need and he will bring it to pass. Are you with me here? Simple little message. So don't be like the man that went to the doctor with a dislocated finger. <laughs> if he had examined himself, he would have known through the swelling process and the painfulness that he had a dislocated finger oh, yes. and that he was not hurting all over. As I thought about this message this morning when I got up by the rivers, I was hurting all over. <laughs> I was stiff. I reached for my Tylenol. Yes. Let me go ahead and take these two tablets so I can move. But the thing is, is I wouldn't let one thing stop me from coming to the house of wishes. I was determined if I had to walk, if I had to crawl, if I had to top, I was going to make it here. And that's the determination that all of us have to have if we're going to make it through this earthly journey. Are you with me here? Well, we've got to stop holding on to stuff. Holding on, even in a marriage, holding on to stuff. I remember the last time you didn't get me no roses for this and uh, don't men don't ever mess up. I don't care. If they tell you, Nick, they don't want anything, get it anyway. Because the worst thing to have is to have one of them come back and tell you, Sister Earlene, you know Kenna. You knew it was our anniversary. And you just passed up all those flower shops. That's all right. It's been 30 years, but I remember that. I'm just using y'all. I love you too. And so the thing is, is that you have to understand my point is let it go. Don't worry about it. Forget about it. Leave it alone. See, it's tearing you up. The folk that's messing with you ain't worried about it. They sleeping every night in their bed. And, and see, some folk with people around the corner just to see how you handling things. They say stuff to mess you up. Have you ever been trying to do something? And I remember my mother there was trying to cook and stuff, and she's trying to measure with the old sifter, you know, not this, not this new stuff they got. You just open the package, pull it in. My mother had a sifter, you had to work it like that. See, some of y'all don't know where I'm going here. And and be trying to measure stuff, and I'd be asking her mama, she said, Boy, leave me alone. You're messing up my measuring stuff. I've got to get this cake right. Every now and then we've got folk like that. They just love to mess up your day. Let, let me give you let me give, give you proof of Donald. They call you early in the morning. Child, did you know? They got it all wrong, but they're gonna tell you. And then you thinking about it all day long, just mess you up. And you done worried about it all day and you get home and find out the true story. Mm-hmm. You say I ain't listening to them no more, but next time <laughs> you right back there again. So the thing is that I hope you get the message that. Don't let one thing stop you. Don't let what you don't have or how you dress or what they say about you because folk going to talk about you no way, in any way. Yeah. If you paid $5,000 for a Sunday dress and you came here wearing it, they say you overdressed. So don't worry about it. Just wear what you got. Go back to the old flower sack dresses. Mm. I know I'm finna get cursed out now, but I, you know. In other words, so I'm trying to tell them, D, don't spend no whole lot of money on a lot of clothes. Amen? Yeah, but, but you know, I say it because it's true. Uh, how, ma- how many of us tried on many different things before we got to church today? Not me. Not me. <laughs> But we lose a lot of time. I don't have the right thing to wear. And so we have to understand that God is looking 
and he's judging us. Like this man who was sad and went away because he let one thing stop him from fellowship with God. Amen. I posed a question to you the second time. What is your thing that keeps you from your fellowship with God? What is the one thing that hinders you from doing God's will? What is the one thing that keeps you from fellowship and being friendly with other folk along the way? It's not a shouting message. It's a learning message. You need to feel this because it'll help all of us that we need to get rid of that dead weight. As Paul says, we're running a race here. And the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but it's given to the one who endureth to the end. That's who's going to get the prize. And so we need to thank God for this message. We need to thank God for this rich young ruler. It doesn't say anything else about it. But it says that he went away sorrowful. Some of it because he did not want to give up what he had. That he thought it, that it outweighed silver and gold. Have I none? But such as I have, I give unto thee. Look on us in the name of Jesus. I shall be able to walk again. God bless you and keep you is my prayer today. I, I know that Jesus gave us an example of going through this life the three and a half years. He didn't let his family not believe in him stop him. He did not let the Roman soldiers stop him. He didn't let Caiaphas and Caesar, stop him. He went on the old rugged cross for you and me. Simply because he knew it was greater on the other side. And, and that's what we need to plant our feet on, our gospel feet, that is better on the other side than it is on this side. And we give him thus far the glory and the honor that's due his name, for he is our living God. He is the reason for the season. He is the one who will deliver us. So if that's someone out there today who might not know Jesus for themselves, you might have one thing that's heavy on your heart that you need to get rid of. Bring it unto Jesus and I guarantee you he will fix it. He tells us in his word, he says, when thou art weak, that's, that's when my strongness steps in. And so we need to understand that sometimes we have stuff weighing heavy on our hearts. That child, that loved one, bring it to Jesus. Whether you're coming by letter of restoration of faith or a candidate for baptism, our motto is, whosoever will, let them come. Again, what hinders you? What's keeping you? from serving an almighty God who woke you up this morning in your right mind. I don't know anybody that wouldn't serve a God like this. So I give him the praise, I give him the glory, and I'll give him the honor. Nobody can do me like Jesus.